Hello everybody. Today we will talk about the skeletal tissue. Skeletal tissue forms the structures that form the skeleton. So the structures of the skeleton are formed by the skeletal tissue. First, <coughs> we'll see uh, the structures. Those are formed by the skeletal tissue. Then we'll talk about the skeletal tissue structures, cartilages, bones, and different types of bone markings, structure of the bone, covering of the bone, different types of cells in the bone, and bone marrow. <coughs> so, the structures that are formed by the skeletal tissue are bones, cartilages, and ligaments. And you know that these are the structures present in the skeleton. Cartilages and ligaments help to connect the bones to each other. Connect the bones to each other. Okay. <coughs> now, the important differences between these structures are in bones you have blood vessels so bones are vascular okay have blood vessels <coughs> as well as nerves so, if fracture occurs in the bone, then you see bleeding and you feel pain. However, cartilages and ligaments are avascular. That means no blood vessels, no nerves. Cartilages. There are three types of cartilages. Hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, and fibrocartilage. Hyaline cartilage is the most abundant or common type cartilage in the body. And <clears throat> hyaline cartilage provides support, flexibility, and resilience, which structures are formed by the hyaline cartilage i mentioned the names before just quickly reminding again fetal skeleton skeleton then articular cartilage in the joints articular means joint costal cartilage attached to the ribs in the thoracic case okay respiratory tract your larynx trachea bronchi those cartilages are hyaline cartilage so these are the structures where you will see the hyaline cartilage elastic cartilage is present only in few structures epiglottis is one of those epiglottis and ear pinna of the ear so both start with e elastic okay and elastic cartilage contains elastic fibers and the elastic fibers provides elasticity flexibility you can change the shape easily and when you remove the pressure it goes back to its actual shape fibro cartilage lot of collagen fibers are present in the fibro cartilage the structures that are formed by 
this type of cartilage are meniscus. You know meniscus is in the knee joint, hard structure because a lot of fibers are in it. Intervertebral discs in between vertebrae and also pubic symphysis, the structure that connects the two hip bones anteriorly. Okay, so these are the structures formed by fibrocartilage. Here you can see the location of those three types of cartilages. I'm quickly going over again. Uh, fetal skeleton, whole skeleton of the fetus. Then these are costal cartilages in the thoracic case. You see attached to the ribs. Articular cartilages in the joints. Okay. Respiratory tract cartilages. Your larynx, trachea, and bronchi. So the blue structures are hyaline cartilages and then elastic cartilage in the ear shown by green and epiglottis. Here is the epiglottis that covers the larynx. Okay? So those two start with E, epiglottis and ear by the elastic and then fibrocartilage this is pubic symphysis here and meniscus in the knee joint also uh, fibrocartilage forms the intervertebral discs between the vertebrae okay now we'll talk about the bones 206 bones are present in the adult human skeleton and the number may vary a little bit like 203 to 206 now all the bones of the skeleton are divided into two groups axial and appendicular axial skeleton is this part that means axial uh, skeleton uh, includes the skull the thoracic case and the vertebral column okay so those three structures the skull bones the thoracic case bones that means the ribs and vertebral column or vertebrae so those belong to the axial appendicular skeleton includes the upper and lower limbs and the girdles that secure the upper and lower limbs so the bones of the upper and lower limbs and the girdles here you see the axial and appendicular parts of the skeleton uh, have been shown by two different colors okay functions of the bones support bones form the whole skeleton and you know that a skeleton supports the whole body protection uh, your brain is protected by the cranial bones your heart is protected by the ribs your spinal cord is protected by the vertebrae so the bones protect important organs in the body movement bones form the joints and we move the bones or body parts at the joints by the action of the muscles so with the help of the skeletal muscles we move the bones at the joints and joints are formed by the bones without the joints we 
cannot move the body parts storage huge amount of calcium and phosphorus are stored in the bone blood cell formation you know inside the bones you have the bone marrow and red bone marrow is the main or primary site for blood formation <clears throat> inside the bone bone also you have fat and triglyceride and fat and triglyceride are the stored form of energy so small amount of fat or triglyceride can produce plenty of ATP or energy classification of the bones we classify the bones by two ways one is by the shape of the bones and another is by the texture okay so by shape we divide the bones into short short bones long bones flat bones and irregular bones so here you see in this picture this is a long bone your humerus femur tibia right fibula radius ulna all those are long bones so long bones are long and <coughs> flat bones are flat and usually slightly curved so flat and slightly like curved for example your sternum this is the sternum cranial bones like parietal bones occipital bone right uh, temporal bones so they are flat but slightly curved like this <coughs> irregular bones irregular bones don't have any definitive shape so you will see a number of structures or processes stick out from the bone so it doesn't have any particular shape multiple processes stick out from the bone good example is vertebrae so vertebrae has a body and seven processes short bones are short like cubical shaped or cube shaped bones so the height and width almost same and the size is small where you will find the short bones in the wrist so wrist bones those are called the carpals or carpal bones and ankle bones tarsal ankle bones okay so tarsals and carpals those are short bones so these are uh, four different types of bones uh, based on the shape by texture we divide the bones into two types compact and spongy compact bone is hard solid and spongy bone is also called cancellous bone has a lot of spaces in inside the bone so when you eat a chicken leg you know the hard bone that you break uh, that is compact but at the end of the bones uh, you have you know uh, soft bones 
that you can easily crash that's the spongy bone so uh, by te texture we divide into compact and spongy or cancellous here <coughs> you see a long bone and a long bone has two ends upper and lower ends so this is the upper end this is the lower end and the ends are called ep phi ses remember s e s indicates plural so since there are two ends we say epiphysis that means the long bone has two epiphysis upper and lower so cis is singular if i only indicate one epiphysis if i indicate two epiphysis so a long bone has epiphysis that means two ends and the middle portion is called diaphysis since it is only one cis shaft or diaphysis so that is the shaft that connects two ends okay now <coughs> if you cut the long bone and see inside this is a longitudinal section you see at the ends you have spongy bone inside the epiphysis and you see a lot of spaces in the spongy bone it is like honeycomb like appearance and the outer layer is compact very hard and solid okay so only the outer covering is compact bone here okay but inner part is spongy okay <clears throat> now if you see the spongy bone under the microscope it will look like this many processes are in the spongy bone and these processes are called trabeculae so trabeculae are these processes and now you see in between the trabeculae you have spaces why these spaces are filled with red bone marrow red bone marrow okay so <clears throat> that's why you have a lot of spaces inside the spongy bone and this red bone marrow inside the spongy bone will remain throughout the life and will continuously produce the blood cells now let's see the shaft part or diaphysis here you see compact bone from the wall and inside the diaphysis or shaft you have a cavity that is called the medullary cavity okay and in early part of your life the medullary cavity is filled with red bone marrow red bone marrow in the early part of your life however <coughs> later the red bone marrow is converted to yellow bone marrow 
which is actually fat or adipose tissue that's why it looks yellow so in early part of your life the medullary cavity contains the red bone marrow that means it can produce the blood cells red bone marrow produces the blood cells however later it becomes fat turns to fat or yellow bone marrow which is not capable of producing blood cells okay but it acts as a stored source of energy however again reminding you that inside the spongy bone red bone marrow always remains as red bone marrow and throughout the life uh, it produces the blood cells so if i ask you in adults <coughs> in a long bone which part produces the blood cells you can say that the ends or epiphysis where you have the red bone marrow throughout the life but the bone marrow inside the medullary cavity which becomes yellow uh, and cannot produce blood cells in adults however in infants or in very early part of your life the inside the whole long bone you have the red bone marrow that means the whole bone forms the blood cells now we'll see the structure of a flat bone if you cut a flat bone and see you will see the outer and inner layers are formed by compact hard bones hard bone and middle portion is spongy so in between outer and inner compact layers you have the spongy bone in the middle so it is like a sandwich right and inside the spongy bone i already mentioned that you have the red bone marrow throughout the life so we can say that the flat bones produce flat bone produces the blood cells throughout the life here you see the trabeculae and spaces okay <laughs> now we'll talk about the bone markings or projections now if you see the bones you'll see different bones have different markings on them why you have so many different markings on the bones some markings are to help the attachment of the muscles and ligaments or tendons so for the attachment and some projections or markings are to form the joints so first let's see the <coughs> structures on the bone we see uh, for the attachment of the muscles and ligaments or tendons so tuberosity if you see uh, a structure on the bone which is kind of round rounded projection that is called tuberosity for example radial tuberosity you will see uh, in radius the bone radius has a tuberosity called the radial tuberosity <coughs> uh, on the humerus the arm bone you have deltoid tuberosity for the attachment of the deltoid muscle so tuberosity uh, is a rounded projection crest the narrow prominent ridge when we use the word 
crest uh, sometimes we use it to indicate the top of the mountain right the crest of the mountain that means the top narrow portion or prominent ridge example on the hip bone you have iliac crest for the attachment of the abdominal muscles trochanter large irregular bony mass large irregular bony mass is a trochanter on the femur the bone of your thigh you have two large bony masses called the greater and lesser trochanters for the attachment of the gluteal muscles line sometime you will see narrow ridge on the bone on the surface of the bone uh, those are lines <clears throat> for example in your femur you have supracondylar lines tubercle small rounded projection so if you see the rounded projection is larger or bigger usually we say tuberosity if it is a small tiny round structure we say tubercle in uh, your humerus you have greater and lesser tubercles epicondyle epicondyle are raised area above a condyle so if you see the femur the lower end of femur you have two condyles this is one this is another and above the condyle you see a small elevated area like this so this is condyle and this is epicondyle like you know when you uh, walk with your son small you know child sometime uh, your child will tell you that i can't walk anymore so you will put your child on your shoulder right so you are the condyle and your child is sitting on you is epicondyle <clears throat> spine sharp slender projections uh, that sticks out from the bone that is called spine spine of the scapula spinous process uh, process any bony projections can be termed as a process there are many processes in the skeleton uh, you know uh, zygomatic process frontal process you have styloid process in the temporal bone mastoid process so uh, the processes are the bony structures that sticks stick out from the main portion of the bone so for example this is your vertebrae this is the body of the vertebrae and uh, several you know structures stick out from the vertebrae so these are processes okay so now quickly go over uh, you see here this is a hip bone and this top narrow uh, uh, area is called the crest iliac crest trochanter the femur you have two irregular bony masses called trochanter okay process this is a vertebrae and this is spinous process there are other processes too okay and condyle epicondyle sitting on the condyle <coughs> uh, the structures that form the joints so which st structures of the bone form the joints head 
you know uh, the head of the femur this is a socket in the hip bone and this is the head of the femur okay so femur is the you know the longest bone of the body in the thigh so this head portion fits into the bony socket of the hip bone to form the hip joint so this is how the head forms a joint facets on the bones sometimes you will see flat nearly flat smooth articular surface so they form joints condyle i showed you the condyle and condyles are rounded articular projections and condyles form joints for example again this is the lower end of the femur okay these two are the condyles at the lower end of the femur and also upper end of the tibia you have condyles like this okay so this is the leg bone tibia this is the thigh bone femur so these two are condyles and these two are condyles and this is the knee joint so you see that condyles form the joints okay so head forms joint condyle forms joint and facets also form joints ramus arm like part of a bone is termed as a ramus and ramus also helps to form the joint so those are the structures uh, in the bone they participate in joint formation so those are the structures uh, help uh, the attachment of the muscles and ligaments and help to form the joints now we'll see the bone markings depressions and openings sometime on the bone you'll see a depression like this sink like area or depression so that is called a fossa okay so for uh, fossa is a shallow basin like depression and <clears throat> there is a fossa on the sphenoid bone in your skull and this fossa is called hypophyseal fossa why because the pituitary gland you know the master gland sits in it so that's why it is called hypophyseal fossa because another name of pituitary is hypophysis so you see this depression on the bone is for this gland right so this fossa is for the pituitary gland <coughs> meatus canal like passageway you know the ear this is your ear and this is called outer ear canal or external acoustic meatus so meatus is a canal like passage okay tunnel like you know tunnel you drive through so that is a meatus sinus if you see a cavity inside the bone so sinus is a cavity inside the bone inside your 
मैक्सिला और स्पिनॉइड और फ्रंटल बोन यू हैव कैविटीज सो दिस इज द कैविटी इनसाइड द बोन दैट इज ए साइनस ओके साइनस मेक्स द बोन लाइट योर bones of the skull uh, the number of bones of your skull have sinuses to make the head part lighter and sinus contains air so air filled cavity inside the bone sometimes you know the mucous membrane that lines the wall of the sinus can get infected and can secrete fluid that can fill that cavity and that is called sinusitis okay so sinusitis is the inflammation of the wall of the sinus groove groove is also called sulcus you'll often often see these words sulcus or groove is a furrow you know uh, sometime uh, if i give you a piece of wood and ask you to you know make a groove narrow long groove on it uh, that is a sinus or groove now on the bone we have grooves for what why we have grooves on the bones you know the blood vessels or tendons or ligaments or nerves can rest in the groove so shallow uh, shallow narrow elongated depression on the bone where you know a blood vessel or a ligament right uh, uh, can nicely rests on <coughs> fissure and foramen these are openings so if this is a bone and you have an opening in it okay so this is the opening through which the blood vessels or nerves can pass so opening is <coughs> also openings are present in the bones particularly if you see the bottom of the skull you will see many openings okay in the bottom of the skull there are many openings through the bones now if you see the opening is round or almost round like oval that is termed as a foramen if you see the opening is like a slit elongated that is called a fissure okay so that is the difference between the fissure and foramen okay <coughs> and the blood vessels or nerves pass through usually pass through the foramen or fissure okay so we have already talked about the parts of a long bone epiphysis and diaphysis now we'll talk about the coverings of the bone so the bone has a connective tissue covering and that covering of the bone is called the peri ostium peri means around and ostium is bone so around the bone the covering 
is the periosteum. So this is the covering of the bone, connective tissue covering. Okay. Now the periosteum has two layers in it. Okay. So outer layer and inner layer. So this is the inner layer of the periosteum and the red one is the outer layer of the periosteum. Okay. So you see that it is a double layered covering around the bone. So outer one is the fibrous layer of the periosteum and inner one is called cellular or osteogenic layer. Osteogenic also called cellular. Okay, so these are the two layers of the periosteum. Okay, <clears throat> now the outer fibrous layer. Just think that I mentioned before the structure that has a lot of fibers, fibers in it. That is structure is tough. So outer layer is fibrous. That means it is tough to do what? Protect the bone. So for protection. Outer fibers layer is tough, lot of fibers in it, and it gives or provides protection. <coughs> Inner cellular or osteogenic layer. Osteogenic means bone formation layer, and it has many cells. That's why called the cellular or osteogenic layers. From this layer, new bone tissue is formed. That's, that's why it is called osteogenic layer. And it has different types of cells. Which cells you have in the osteogenic layer? Osteoblasts are young cells. Osteoclasts are giant. cells and osteogenic cells are stem cells okay osteoblasts are young and they produce you know young people produce more so osteoblasts are young healthy cells of the bone osteo means bone and osteoblasts form the matrix. This is very important information. Osteoblasts. What kind of cells? Young. And they do what? Produce matrix of the bone. Osteo clasts are giant cells and they love to destroy destroy what they destroy the matrix so opposite right osteoblasts produce new matrix osteoclasts destroy the matrix okay <coughs> and osteogenic osteogenic cells produce new cells not the matrix remember new cells by cell division mitosis because osteogenic cells are stem cells right so they 
will produce new cells by mitosis. So now you see that to produce new bone tissue, you need new bone tissue needs what? You need matrix and new cells. So those are the two components of the bone tissue, the cells and matrix. Okay. So osteoblasts and osteogenic cells, these two are needed to produce new bone tissue. Osteoclasts destroy the matrix. Now, bone also is destroyed when osteoclasts are used. You know, when new bone is formed, sometimes excess bone tissue is deposited or accumulated somewhere. So, to remove the excess bone tissue, to make the surface, you know, smooth, you need to remove the excess bone tissue. When you, you know, see a crack on the wall of your house, you put the cement or uh, speckle. Uh, to first, you know, fill that crack roughly and then uh, you let it dry and then you see you use the sand papers to remove excess, you know, uh, uh, cement to make the surface smooth. Same thing happens when the new bo bone is formed, excess tissue can be you know uh, produced somewhere and that should be removed and osteoclasts will do that when the bones heal after fracture so this is a fracture in the bone okay you got a fracture so first uh, the bone tissue is formed here to fill that gap right roughly and you'll see a small bump after new bone tissue is formed to join the broken pieces and this excess you know uh, tissue bone tissue should be destroyed to make the surface smooth right so osteoclasts will do that will work like a sandpaper so during the formation of new bone or during the healing of the fracture osteoclasts play very important role and another very important function of osteoclasts is if in your blood the calcium drops blood calcium gets lower than normal then the osteoclasts will get more active to do what to break the matrix of the bone why because the matrix of the bone has plenty of calcium. You must remember uh, when we talked about the functions of the bones, we said that calcium and phosphate, phosphate. So calcium and phosphate, these minerals are heavily stored in the bone. So if in your blood the calcium concentration drops, then the osteoclasts will break the matrix to release this calcium so calcium will enter into the blood to bring the calcium back to normal so that is another important function of the osteoclasts so anyway so those are the cells present in the osteogenic or cellular layer and these cells help to form the new bone <coughs> now you remember uh, inside the shaft of the long bone you have what you have the medullary cavity so there is a cavity right and the
wall of the ca uh, medullary cavity, you have another membranous layer, and that is called endosteum. Endo means inside endosteum. So periosteum is the outer covering and it has two layers, outer fibers, inner osteogenic and around the medullary cavity there is another membrane that is called the endosteum. <coughs> Here now you see uh, this is the bone. So this is the periosteum peri around periosteum it has two layers right fibrous layer and inner uh, cellular layer and this is called the endosteum here this membrane endosteum So we already know where the red bone marrow is present in early, very early part of your life, actually everywhere, inside the long bones, everywhere, that means at the ends as well as inside the shaft, you have red bone marrow and also inside the flat bones. So in early part of your life, inside the long bones as well as flat bones everywhere you have the red bone marrow and that produces the blood cells in adults i already mentioned that the flat bones have the red bone marrow throughout the life as well as the upper end and lower ends so the ends have red bone marrow but the middle portion uh, inside the medullary cavity or inside the shaft the red bone marrow becomes yellow so in adult only the ends of the long bones and the flat bones produce the blood cells not the shaft for different types of cells uh, in the bone i have already talked about the osteoblasts the young produce matrix, osteogenic, the stem cells by mitosis, uh, they produce new cells and we also talked about the osteoclasts, the giant cells. <coughs> and the mature cells are osteocytes. So these are four different types of cells in the bone all start with osteo osteo means bone right and blast young site mature or old osteocytes are located inside the lacunae so this is osteocyte the mature cell of the bone and osteocytes are housed inside the tiny cavity that is called lacunae. Okay. <coughs> Here you see uh, the picture. This is not the real picture, just uh, you know the drawing. So osteogenic stem cells osteoblasts young so you see healthy you know young people are healthy so osteoblast osteocyte when the osteoblast gets older or mature the size gets smaller however some processes are formed in the mature cells so the size is smaller than osteoblast you know when we get older our size you know gets smaller same thing happens here 
and some processes are formed. So this is osteocyte and osteoclasts, giant cells, and they love to do what? They love to break the matrix. So <coughs> inside the osteoclasts, you will see many nuclei and many mitochondria. Why? Many nuclei, you know, nucleus is the control center of the cell, and mitochondria are the power houses of the cell. Since this is a giant cell and it breaks the matrix of the bone, it needs a lot of control and energy. So that's why it has many nuclei and many mitochondria and it you know uh, destroys the matrix so those are the things you need to know from the skeletal skeletal tissue part one okay so we have learned uh, the following important things skeletal tissue structures right bones, cartilages, and ligaments. Then we have learned about the location of three different types of cartilages, of three different types of cartilages. Parts of the skeleton, axial and appendicular, right? So, skeleton parts which bones belong to axial and which bones belong to appendicular skeleton then we have talked about the parts of a bone parts of long bone epiphysis diaphysis we talked about the types of bones short bone long bone right flat bone uh, and irregular bone also compact and spongy okay we talked about the periosteum covering of the bone right and we talked about different types of cells in the bone tissue or bone and their functions so those are the important things we discussed in this part so let's stop here